Hi everyone, welcome back to another installment of Infinite Jess for MLB.com's Cut 4. I'm Jess Kleinschmidt. Now this one's going to be an interesting episode. I'm not saying I'm excited again, even though I am excited because I think you guys are sick of that redundant statement. Sorry that all my episodes are exciting. Back off. But this one I'm going to take kind of outside of the diamond and into the stands. Obviously, we're still going to talk about baseball, but this is really cool because we got to see a member of the media's athletic ability, not mine. That's embarrassing, but I do, I am up to like the 10 pound dumbball, dumbbells, dumbbells, but I don't, I don't work out with them. I use them as a door stopper. That's a whole nother episode of Infinite Jess. I'm going to be talking to Roxy Bernstein, and this is actually going to be about Roxy Bernstein. He's a huge member of the media down in the Bay Area. Recently, while he was covering an A's game, doing the play-by-play broadcast, Joey Gallo hit a foul ball up to him in the press box, which is fine, right? And he made the catch. That's number one in regards to how cool this was, comma, but he did not skip a beat when it came to broadcasting. So while he's catching the ball, he said, and I caught it. He sounded way better than I just did. He's got a gorgeous angel muffin, precious voice. What sounded way better than I did. And, and, and he gave the foul ball to a kid. He stood up, still working, because the dude never stops, and gave the foul ball to a little girl. Because he's a precious baby angel and he's going to heaven. That's how it works, people. Don't steal foul balls from the children. That's another other episode of Infinite Jest. Check out this awesome clip. The kick and the 2-2 for Montas. And Gallo fouls it back this way. And I caught it. How about that? Nice job. Where's the kid? You got a little kid right over here. A little girl. Where do we got a kid? A little girl with a glove. Nice play, Roxy. Thank you. There you go. Well done. One-handed, by the way, too. As you can see, he's fabulous. He's wonderful, right? So he didn't skip a beat, gave it to a little kid. Every perfect element that goes into making the perfect foul ball catch, barehanded. I know Robert Flores is probably like, told you so, because he has this weird thing about dads wearing gloves to games. So he did it barehanded, and he's awesome. So I do have Roxy here with me today. We're going to talk to him in a little bit. But first... I'm very excited about my first guest because not only is she a good friend of mine, but she has a very extensive resume when it comes to baseball and she's a play, she's a broadcaster herself. She does broadcasting, she does play by play, and she currently works in the Rangers organization. So without further ado, I'm going to give Melanie Newman a call and she's wonderful and I'm so excited for you guys to meet her. Okay, so thank you, Melanie, so much for stopping by. Like I told y'all, um, she is not only in the Rangers organization at the moment, she does broadcast, among a million other things. We were trying to figure out <laughs> what exactly to call her, but because she, she does it all. Uh, she works at the uh, Frisco Rough Riders, the AA affiliate of the Rangers. So I figured not only was she perfect to have on because it was Joey Gallo who hit this foul ball, but she's a broadcaster herself. So Melanie, I talked to you earlier, just casually, I said, do you want to come on the show? And it turns out, how do I say this nicely? You really <laughs> struggle to catch foul balls while you're doing play-by-play. I'm not an athlete. Yeah. No, Perfect. I own that. I own that all day. So when you saw Roxy do this, did you have flashbacks? Because you told me right before the show, one time during spring training, there were five foul balls that came your way. Yeah. So that's what was so funny listening to the call because I immediately got the notification since it happened at Globe Life. And you hear it, and he's just so nonchalant, like, oh, Joey Gallo at the plate and the pitch, and I caught the foul ball. Right. And you're like, I'm sorry, like, rewind for a minute. So we were actually joking, um, is it Salt River Fields in Arizona, about, like, well, what if a foul ball came back your way? And rule number one is, like, move your equipment. Like, right. Don't, don't let that be uh, subject to the foul ball. So we had one, of course, come right back in the booth, and I'm trying to move all my stuff out of the way. I actually took it to the chest. And I have, uh, like, Steve Berthume and all the guys the, in the booth down from me are, like, hanging out the window, like, how do you not catch that? And I, I joked, and uh, then I turned around, and I had to fend off about four more. <laughs> so the fact that he caught it, and, I mean, like, you're multitasking at the same time. So you're, like, trying to maintain your pace and, yeah. and everything else, and then all of a sudden, like, you're trying to protect yourself. <laughs> it was yeah. impressive. 
Yeah, because you forget, like, oh yeah, your lives are at stake here. And, and so, would if you if that were to, ha- how did you react? Like, were, did you skip a beat, or would you, if you ever were in that situation again, could you have handled it like Roxy did? I mean, if I had caught it, maybe I okay. think you would have definitely heard like the excitement kind of pitch in my voice, like I saw okay. a ball coming straight back towards me. Okay. Um, because even here we have we have balls that come up, but we're we're in the fourth story in right. Frisco. So it's a little harder, but in San Antonio this past weekend, we were lower and we had a few come back and I was kind of glad that I had color. So I didn't have to say anything for that yeah. moment. I was muted. Cause I was like, Oh, here it goes. And yeah. then, yeah. It's, they would get a screenshot of me, like with my double chin going like, yeah. Oh, you definitely like pull into your body. Isn't. And then Roxy's like, I still look flawless. And I'm looking here, like just all crazy. So <laughs> I don't know how he did it. Um, so obviously you're with the Rangers organization. You cover them well. Joey Gallo is a a Rough Riders alumna, so you've been able to watch him play. He can hit the crap out of the ball. So how big of a deal is it to know that Roxy not only made this catch, but he barehanded of of a guy who is slugging like crazy? That's the thing is it's not like it's just this casual soft pop fly. Like Gallo destroys baseballs. There's a reason he wasn't here that long, and there's a reason he's probably one of the youngest guys on our anniversary team right now. So, I mean, like – trying to come up with the best comparison to that. I mean, like barehanding a line drive from big poppy when he just crushes one, like that's kind of in my head, especially to be that close. How did you know? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I know you so well. That is true. That is true. She actually made me that painting. I don't know if anybody can see that. I made sure I I put that up there. Um, But yeah, so, so it was actually cool. Cause you mentioned Joey Gallo. Um, He grew up in Nevada. So every time he was in this area in Reno, the players would see him and it was one of those guys like when you see Mike Trout for the first time you hear about the the man the myth the legend Bryce Harper you see him you're like that dude's gonna make it and all of a sudden now he's he's this well and I'm glad you got to to step up and and join the show because you have all the perfect elements so we have to make sure that you get a foul ball the next time you do your play I'll work on it oh yeah and you're fabulous too like why not like and I'll make sure I cover it I'll make sure I cover it it doesn't matter how you react to it because I don't know if anybody could do as well as, as Roxy Bernstein did. And I I've, I've heard a couple calls this year with a foul ball in the booth and his is the most streamlined, yeah. nonchalant, like just another and play. I like to stress that to people. Like he made, and like you said, he made the catch and you're like, is he joking? Yeah. Cause like, you heard his I voice tail off it. a little bit. And then all of a sudden you were like, Oh Yeah. Thank gosh there was an actual camera on him. I would have been like, okay, Bernstein, calm down. He didn't make that catch. Like, stop. So, it's great. So, he's, yeah, we have him here, too. So, I'm going to talk to him a little bit. But I wanted to get, like, the background. Like, this is kind of a big deal, and you can't just do It's definitely a big deal. Yeah. So, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. And make sure you're following Melanie on all the social media. She's wonderful. And um, continue the the kick-ass work, man. Like, doing doing the thing. And... Being a female play by play broadcaster, you know, I love you to Reese's Pieces and I appreciate you stopping by. Well, we do it together. Thank you, Melanie, so much for joining us. Um, of course, that was Melanie Newman, a uh, broadcaster, among other things. She does everything when it comes to the Frisco Rough Riders and then some. She's fantastic. So I really appreciate her joining me. It's not easy, right? To not only make the foul ball catch, but to add every element into that is quite phenomenal. So I'm glad she was able to stop by. Um, and I think it's really unique because of the fact that it shows that these broadcasters, these media people are humans. I know I I stress that when it comes to the players, but the media people are indeed members of the human race as well. So don't forget that. Um, Next, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Roxy Bernstein, stopping by, who I'm so grateful that he took some time to hang out with us. And I spoke to him about this just casually before I even wanted to have this show and gave him a lot of props because I thought this was phenomenal. So let me give him a call and we can talk to him about this fantastic catch. So Roxy Bernstein's here and I'm trying not to get too excited because like I, I don't know, he's great and I'm so excited to have him here. So when he made this play, obviously I'm a raised A's fan. So when he did this and not only he made the play, he was making discussing the play as it happened. So Roxy, we've already looked at the play. But I'm curious, how did you not break any stride? Not only were you still holding on to your equipment, you had a smooth tone, your beautiful voice was going, and you just casually made it happen. How? What was going on in your mind? How did you make this thing occur? 
Well, first off, Jess, we're there. We got a job to do, right? Yes. People want to know what's going on in the game. If they're listening to us, most likely they can't see the game. They have no clue what's going on unless Vince or Ken or I tell them what's going on. Right. Um, so it's important to remember the game always comes first. Yes. And it just so happened I became, I guess, a part of the game because a foul ball was hit to me. Huh. Um, and so, you know, I'm just calling the play-by-play. Hey, Joey Gallo's at the plate and Frankie Montas with the pitch. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I see this ball coming back toward me. Yeah. All of a sudden, I, I literally didn't have to move. Did not have to. I just stuck my left hand up and caught it. And you were all right, smooth. I've caught, I've caught smooth. What's that? You were so smooth with it too. Whether you're you're speaking <laughs> like it was, I would have been freaking out. And you maintained your cool. Well, I, I, I you just kind of react. I didn't have, I guess, a, a chance to panic, but it, it was coming right at me, and I just stuck the left hand up, got it, and in stride. All right, foul ball. I caught it. Well, you know, if somebody makes a nice catch in the stands, you always make sure you point, hey, great catch with a fan down there with a glove. That's or, oh, nice play by the kid down there, down the right field line. That's um, so I just happened. I was the lucky one that got this foul ball. And you want to talk about lucky. The moment you made the catch, you were looking around for a little kid that, you know, wanted the ball. You mentioned, you know, you would have probably brought it home and given it to one of your kids, but you managed to find a kid that mm-hmm. was there. How important is it to stick to that rule? I mean, obviously there's different scenarios for it, but I just wanted to highlight the fact that you stuck to very good foul ball etiquette. And what was your first, (laughs) you just stood up and you're like, I need to find a kid. Basically. Yeah. I caught it. All right. I knew I wasn't keeping it. Look, I'm getting paid to be there. I got in for free. So why should I get to keep it? Okay. Yeah. I had my nice moment. I caught it. Sure. And my son wasn't happy with me. He's eight. Right. And he wanted the ball. Daddy, how could you give it away? That was mine. You could have given it to me. But you know what? In that moment, give it to somebody. And right away, I'm looking for a kid. So I look right in front of our booth, at the, the second level there at the ballpark in Arling Center. I guess Globe Life Park is what they call it. Yeah. And I saw this little girl. And the little girl had her glove. She's there with her parents uh, and her Rangers hat. And I told her to come on up and I dropped the ball right in her glove. And the cool thing, Jess, was I, I looked over at her about two innings later and she had this huge smile still was just staring at this baseball. Aww. And I could tell how important it was to her and how special that she's able to take a souvenir home. And that, that made my night right there. Uh, uh, and on top of, okay, catching it and watching a, a monumental comeback by the A's. But seeing that little girl react and then just still staring at the baseball two innings later was really neat. Yeah, I'm sure you made her made her life, made her day. It was definitely a cool moment. And you mentioned, you know, the A's, but the A's coming back, that's kind of synonymous with one each one in another this season. And that was great. To <laughs> well, um, have you ever caught a ball before this day? Like while you were working? While I was working, no. I mean, I, I'd like, you know, if somebody threw a ball into the dugout when I, I may have been in the dugout pregame, but I had never caught a ball while working. Balls had come close to booths, and there's some ballparks where you better be on high alert that the foul ball could come into the booth, like Anaheim or Seattle, where there it's, or Arizona, where it's strong foul ball territory. But I had never caught one. Uh, I'd caught one in the stands when I'd gone to a game before, but never in a situation like this. Yeah, I just, and I loved listening to the call. Um, so, I mean, you're, when you're at Globe Life Park, you're surrounded by, like, former players who have turned analysts. Like, CJ Nikowski was there. Did you hear anybody mm-hmm. of your peers saying, like, dang, man, that was pretty fantastic. I want to know what people around you were saying. People, a couple ca- people came by and came, like, came by the way, hey, nice catch. Oh, way to go. Uh, and CJ told me the next day when I saw him. Uh, nice catch. He and Dave Raymond, because the TV voice of the Rangers, Dave and I have been friends for a long, actually since college. Um, And of course, Glenn and Ray had to give me a little bit of a dig, you know, our TV guys, just because. (laughs) 
it would it wouldn't be natural for anybody for them to compliment you. So and the, and the Rangers radio guys next door to us, uh, they they've all Matt Hicks and Eric Nadell and Jared Sandler like threw their finger out, yeah, hey, thumbs up uh, over across through the the window to me. But it was actually the coolest thing was so I go down to the clubhouse right after the like when the game ends. Yeah, I do a player interview for the post game show. So I walk into the clubhouse and they're all the A's are all jacked, right? They're pumped. They're so excited after the comeback win and dramatic to roll back like they did and win it in ten. So I'm sitting there clubhouse. I'm kind of waiting for Chris Davis, who hit the game winning home. I was going to talk to KD on the post game show. And Marcus Simeon, I see him in the clubhouse, and I'm looking for KD. And I've actually known Marcus since he was in high school. But Marcus looks over at me and goes, "Hey, nice, nice catch." I go, you saw that? He goes, yeah, I'm shortstop. I see everything. That's what. So it, that that was pretty cool that that Marcus said something. Yeah. Kind of kind of good at baseball. That's not a bad compliment to get. But <laughs> I can tell you, if CJ Nikowski ever saw me making a catch, he would be like, "You could do better." It didn't matter if I dove for it, did a flip. He's like, "Eh, it was all right." <laughs> so that's just what he would do with me. But have a Marcus Simeon compliment, like check that off your bucket list. That's great. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Roxy. You were absolutely fantastic. That was a great play all around. I, I watched it like 20 different times. Obviously, I'm a raised Ace fan, so it was just really great on my heart. And you gave it to that little girl. It was like absolutely perfect, and I really appreciate you being here today. My pleasure, Jess. Anytime. Thank you so much for joining me, Roxy. Um, I I adore that man. I've been looking up to him for years, and to have him on my show was just so amazing to my heart. Someone I look up to and a good friend of mine on my show just really, really makes me extremely happy. Um, so now is the best part of the show because I get to talk about myself. Just kidding. A little bit about myself because I'm vain. It's cool. So what I did, I have, tell me something good. You know how it goes, people. I asked the world, well, my followers on Twitter, who their baseball spirit animal would be. And a couple people started off by giving me actual animals, which is great. I want to say I'm a unicorn mixed with like a sloth, but also a chihuahua. That's my personal spirit animal. Send me your, your spirit animals. I really want to know because I want to know what kind of crazy people follow me on Twitter. But I want to know your baseball spirit animal. So I took to Twitter and asked that, and I got some pretty awesome responses. So here we go. This one's my favorite, obviously. Um, Ashley Coomer said, does Jessica Kleinschmidt count because she's mine? <sighs> Yeah, it does, sweet cheeks. I even responded, yep, with a little heart, because I thought that was the nicest thing ever. She was probably joking. It's fine. Michael Piff said, honestly, Yomer Sanchez. And he sent me this gif, gif, whatever you want to call it, of Sanchez pouring a bucket of Gatorade on himself, because if nobody else is around to celebrate, celebrate with yourself. Even though, like, you know, whatever. Make it about yourself for a little bit. If it's somebody else's birthday, sing, you know, yourself. Don't do that. That's awful. <laughs> At Flagzilla said, Evan Gaddis, el oso blanco. The white bear. It means the white bear. So he told you that. I was all excited because I knew that, but he wanted to tell me. It's fine. Um, he's an animal that grabs a random piece of wood with no grip or pine tar and just hurts baseballs. I didn't realize how cool this was. Justin Bohr does it too. He doesn't wear batting gloves when he's going up to bat and just like smacks the ball. That's crazy. That's awesome. Chris Harris said, Bartolo, same, same. We are similarly aged and shaped, and we both enjoy life to the fullest. I'm not the same age as Bartolo, but shape, I'm almost there. We're all almost there, let's be honest. Uh, Z Stone Music, this was really cool. Uh, mine is the great Ricky Henderson. He capitalized great. Appreciate you, Zach. He was such a great inspiration to me when I, when I played. I always wiggled my fingers and stole bases like Ricky. Playing like Ricky made the game bearable for me when I wasn't that good. I could always hashtag run like Ricky. I think that's fantastic. Um, you want to talk about a guy who changed the way that baseball players play, showing off speed. You can do more than just have a bat. I think it's fantastic. And obviously, he's still in the game, so we love that as well. Joe Christie said, the guy who was eating bacon off a stick in the playoffs a couple years ago, and it's a picture of a guy eating a piece of bacon off a stick a couple years ago. And also, my spirit animal as well. Hashtag respect, man. Go on with your bad self. Astro Boy at Astro Blast 65 said, also this guy that went to, to an ALCS game in full uniform, just in case. 
I appreciate you. He's just sitting there with his batting gloves like, hey, man, you want to pull Jose Altuve out? You want to take Carlos Correa out? I got you. I can do this. I respect this, people, because at this rate, you know, with position players pitching, maybe we'll pull, pluck somebody out of the out of the stands. Probably Roxy Bernstein, because let's be honest, he can probably handle anything. And do the play-by-play -play wallet. Mic him up, make him make some catches. Ugh, that is my dream. Anywho, thank you so much for joining me on this installment of Infinite Jess, where I take you a little bit outside of the stands. And um, you guys are fantastic, and I really appreciate your time. For another episode of Infinite Jess, I think I've already said that. I'm Jess Klein-Schmidt, and I will see you next time.